Tell you what. Hey. Hi. <laughs> so today we are off to Fort Zealandia. That's the plan. It's somewhere I've always wanted to go. One of the main places I wanted to go whilst I was in Taiwan. But first, I'm off in search of some breakfast. The only problem with markets like this is a road just runs right through it. So you are often trying not to get run over by scooters. Bamboo shoots. That looks promising. I didn't sleep great last night. I think my mind was kind of racing with all this Chinese encirclement of Taiwan and all that. Playing on my mind, getting me nervous. But um, no one seems to mind. There might be heightened tensions at the moment, but as far as I can tell, no one here cares. Hopefully, that's a good sign. It seems to be just one of those things, you know? Something people here have seemingly got used to. It's all going on early morning in Tainan. Everyone's up and at it. Everyone's getting breakfast sorted, the food for the day sorted. Selling their goods and wares. Walking the dog. What kind of kept me awake specifically was I heard a bunch of fighter jets again last night. I guess they're just doing lots of drills to try and keep up readiness. Taiwan's military is in a constant state of readiness, but I think they're extra ready right now. But I guess it's just one of those political and diplomatic dances that people in power want to perform. I think here, like most places though, people just want to be left alone. Oh God. There goes another fighter jet. Well, I don't think you saw it that time, but you did see a bird. So to you, it might sound like that's the most fearsome bird in the world. Thank you. Breakfast located. They looked a bit good, didn't they? I've no idea what's inside them. There's only one way to find out. And it wouldn't be Tainan specifically if there wasn't also a temple here. There's meant to be a thousand temples in Tainan. I don't know if that makes the people here more pious or more religious. Well, I suppose because it's the oldest city. And Ping being the original name. You can't move the temples. Lousy with them. All day. They're not messing around. I hope they're from Taiwan. I'll tell you that much. Well, this is meant to be my little peaceful time down by the river. But they're weed whacking over there. There's masonry going on over there. And fire jets keep on flying over. But I'm not going to let that disturb me from having a relaxing cup of my favourite coffee. EX, Mr. Brown, it's extra. Oh, come on. From a cost to the amount of coffee you get, this is my favourite canned coffee I think I found around here. It's good, it's sweet, it's tasty, it says it's extra. I cut my nails last night. Go, there we go. Double power, double enjoyment, crafted for that extra boost, getting you through the last mile. Ever? The last mile of my life? Probably nothing to worry about. Okay, let's try these um, breakfast items I got. I have no idea what's inside them. But they look pretty good. Hmm. 
Oh, cool. It's kind of like a Bowser dumpling, kind of steamed dumpling, but more greasy and tastes like the inside of a spring roll. It's like cabbage and carrot and other things, I think. Spring onions. These are good. Success on the breakfast from. They're collecting oysters or clams or something, I think. And this is Fort Zealandia, where I wanted to come all day. Well, I've wanted to come for a very long time, actually, so let's do a bit of exploring. And I'll tell you the story of what happened here. I'm actually really excited to be here, which is, I don't know, I just... In the 1600s, the Dutch East India Company were on Taiwan. They had a fort here. Now, this wasn't like a colonial fort. This was more of a trading post. The rest of Taiwan, as far as anyone else was concerned, was just a wilderness where you were going to get malaria and die. Unfortunately for the Dutch East India Company, during this time, stuff was also happening in China. The Manchu Qing Empire in China from Mongolia were coming in and replacing the Ming Dynasty. And in what would become one of the greatest moments of history repeating itself, the first time it happens is when a guy called Kachinga, who was part of the Ming loyalists, fled to Taiwan. Their plan was to go to Taiwan, wait for things to blow over a little bit and retake the mainland, take back control and re-mingify, as it were, the mainland. So Fort Zelandia was a trading post. It wasn't really a military outpost. There was about 700 soldiers here. So when, over the distance, because this fort would eventually, it used to be uh, back onto the water. In fact, you could sail right out of the fort. When the people, the Dutch East India people here, saw coming over the distance, over the horizon, a force of hundreds of Chinese Ming ships, they knew that they were probably gonna have a bad day, actually. The resulting attack was by Kochinga, and it ended up in a nine month siege of the fort. I mean, think of it. It's not a very big area and you've got probably a thousand people in here. The problem was there were 30,000 people outside trying to get in. Initially, the Dutch who had three ships decided to try and attack, <laughs> but that obviously didn't go very well because they were outnumbered 15 to one. They were used to fighting Han Chinese farmers and not the Chinese army. <laughs> So the initial repels of the force went very badly. I mean, they were so outnumbered. And a part of me, and not just because I'm European, but a part of me is rooting for the Dutch, you know? I know that the Chinese are coming, but they're the underdogs and you want them to win. But, well, as far as the force itself, the statues here are for Kachinga. And I, I, I understand that because what Kachinga would eventually set up was a Ming kingdom. I mean, it was a Ming kingdom. It was a, the kingdom of Don Ming. It didn't last very long, uh, but you give it a good shot. It was the last stand, the last bastion of the Ming empire was here. So what happened? How did this nine month siege end? Well, as most things like a siege, it ended with betrayal. I have my photograph taken, but that's fine. So this German military officer that was working here left the fort and did a big backstab by telling Kashinga how Kashinga could take over the fort. One of the sides here to the southwest is slightly elevated and that you could kind of use that elevation of land to attack and people in here wouldn't be safe. Which is something Kashinga already knew about but he didn't realise that the Dutch really had no way to repel. I mean you have to think of it as well, the people here were in siege for nine months. Water was running low, alcohol, food was running low, firewood. There's no firewood, how'd you cook anything? And eventually what happened is the Dutch watched as this German guy told Kashinga how to build the battlements, how to build battering rams, how to build all these stuff, siege operation engines. He, they watched them put them up outside the fort and they thought, 
there's nothing we could do to stop this. But in some ways, Koshinga was a good guy, you could say. <laughs> I mean, he let the Dutch just leave. He allowed them to, just the beat of their drums and the marching of all their flags. He let what he said was gonna happen, happen. He said, if you surrender, I'll let you go. You can take your stuff and leave. I just want the fort. Because he didn't care about the Dutch. He cared about this fortification. They can just go. He wanted just to be able to have the land so that he can start his attack on the mainland, so a base of operations. So we didn't have to build a whole fort. And he kept his promise. He allowed the people to leave. He allowed the Dutch to leave. And this is incredible. And you have to give it to old Kashinga, really, to have such forgiveness in a way. Because, I mean, he was the guy attacking, but that's not the point. The Dutch killed half of his men. 15,000 people. I mean, they died because of illness as well as attacks. But one thing that's also is interesting is at the start of the siege, people were defecting from Kashinga's people into the, into the fort. The defectors are coming into the siege town because there's more food. Obviously, towards the end of that, that changed. Also, it's quite nice. I have the same birthday as Kashinga. Not the same year, but the same birthday. But I do kind of feel like allowing the Dutch to leave, keeping their word, you gotta respect that. The officers who were in charge of Fort Zelandia during the siege were actually reprimanded by the Dutch East India Company. They all got docked six months pay. <laughs> and the main guy, the main general, was the guy in charge, was thrown in pr prison for uh, treason which is nonsense, but he got his day. He wrote a book and told everyone, eventually his memoirs, about how poorly things had gone here. I mean, he was expecting reinforcements. He told people that this attack was coming and people didn't believe him. Imagine being here, stuck, fighting for your life, but not even for your country, fighting for your company. I mean, who would do that now? What, how loyal would you have to be? Here are some of the remnants of the old walls that lead on up to the main part of the fort. Not a lot between you and possible destruction. And what happened to Radler, the German traitor? Well, who knows? In a way, I can't blame him either because he probably knew that the fort was doomed. You look out, you look out there, and you see there's still 15,000 Ming Chinese out there. And you think, we need to surrender. And it was obvious, perhaps, that they needed to surrender. Kuchinga had offered a surrender. Maybe he had convinced himself that he was doing the right thing as well. Maybe he thought he was saving a lot of lives. I can appreciate that, that certainly seems to make sense. So that's the story of Fort Zelandia. It's a good one. If you get a chance, listen to the episode two and episode three of the Formosa Files, which is a podcast that taught me all about this. I really recommend doing that. But I'm so pleased to get a chance to be here. What an amazing place. What an incredible part of history. It really makes me excited, honestly. <laughs> Until next time, everyone. Thanks for watching. Onwards and upwards.